For sheer hard work, few jobs come close to shearing. And there are few trades where you work up such an appetite. It astounds me even still sometimes, because you'll get people that just, you can't fill up. The boys, of course, they're burning it up quicker than anything. I, I think a day shearing something like playing three AFL matches in a day. So, yeah, they burn through the calories pretty quick. It's not like other jobs, no. You've just got to have that fuel in you, though, yeah. It's shearing, the busiest time on a wool-growing property, the shearing shed becomes a small factory and the cooks in the nearby kitchen power this human sweat and toil. They really are the engine room of the shearing team that come onto the station, in our case twice a year, to shear our ewes, and a really important part of, um, of, of our project here. For 46 years, Cheryl Duggan has been making meals for shearing teams. With husband Dick, the couple has travelled the sheep regions of Eastern Australia. Loved it, hated it sometimes when you're getting bogged in the oh no, I've no road or yeah, but love, I think yeah, I love the travel. I think pretty much. When we're not cheering, I don't know what to do with myself. Dick began shearing in his early teens. Well, I started 14 at a shed called Steam Plains. Yeah, and uh, I told him I was 18, of course, but. Anyway, you didn't have to show birth certificates them days. Dick Duggan forged a reputation that earned him the nickname The King. Now 81, The King now plays consort to his queen. Dick gets up and cooks breakfast. I get up about seven and my day starts then and we just progress through the day. He cooks the meat or whatever we need. Whatever needs doing, we do. Pujanook Station is a famous merino stud near Jerilderie in the New South Wales Riverina region, and spring shearing is in full swing. There are eight shearers and as many shed hands. Roustabouts, wool rollers, wool classes, the shearing contractor and the presser. At least 16, often more, hungry workers to feed. It is a logistical exercise and Vic the contractor is vital in in delivering not only good shearers and good shed staff, also the cook and, and organising all the, all the rations. You know, good food and a good bed always keeps men happy, I reckon. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it keeps everyone happy. Good sheep do too, though. <laughs> Geez, you're full of compliments today, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> you can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all of the time, you know? And that's the general run of it. And the blokes said, well, it's there. If they don't want it, they don't have to eat it, you know. But we usually try to put two different meals on each time so that they've got a um, choice of what they eat. Dick Duggan's working day begins in the kitchen soon after five. There's always a hot breakfast on hand. Scrambled eggs, bacon, toast, even fried mushrooms. It's a waiting game and you've got to work by time. At the clock, you know. By 6.30, most of the team is tucking into a hearty breakfast. This team we've got now, they're pretty good on the tooth. They'll eat quite well. In the wool shed, the catching pens are full, and with a full stomach, finely sharpened shears and a minute or two of contemplation, the shearers get ready for the rigours of an eight-hour day. On the stroke of 7.30, they spring into action. For the next two hours, the only time they'll lift their heads is to catch another sheep. All the while in the cookhouse, Cheryl Duggan makes morning tea, known as Smoko, a half-hour break. And Dick acts as delivery boy. Morning smoko is mostly hot food. Party pies, sausage rolls, uh, cocktail frankfurts maybe, or dim sims or whatever. Toasted sandwiches. Today, there's pizza as well, and the team makes short work of it. Very spoiled, really. Lots of variety, which is very important. And um, yeah, all beautiful tasting food. Yeah, it's lovely. 
Well, for a start, if you've got happy men, it makes a hell of a difference. You can get away with a bit, like if the sheep are a bit tough or things aren't quite right. If you've got a good cook and keeps the team happy, it makes a hell of a difference. I think having a good shearer's cook, it's the core of a good team. Keeping everybody happy. If you've got a good cook, everybody's happy. <laughs> Cheryl Duggan's cooking career started by accident. I was thrown into it to start with. The cook snatched it or was sacked. And I was 20 year old, straight out of the city. You've got to cook dinner. OK, I'll do that. When they come down for dinner, no meat. Nobody told me I had to put wood in the f wood fire. So that was my induction into cooking. And it's just rolled on ever since. I um, cooked with my first baby when she was two weeks old and just kept going. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. See ya. When they first met, Dick and Cheryl already had five children between them. Soon after, they married and had four more. Dick worked alongside Cheryl, both as a shearer and shearing contractor. The kids looked after themselves, I guess. Um, oh, I've got photos of the kids looking like they'd just come out of a oh, bog somewhere. Um, don't get a bath until 8 o'clock at night or whatever, but, yeah, the kids love the outdoor life. The work was often remote, the conditions rudimentary. No power, a lot of the sheds in those days when they were little. Well, like even when I first started, it was kerosene fridges, with the difference in refrigeration. You know, you can take things out where once you just couldn't, couldn't have tomatoes or lettuce, especially in the hot, hotter weather. It either come in a tin or you just didn't have it. you just got two hour increments all day long until four o'clock and you can have a shower and take a break till five o'clock. That's about it. The kitchen at Pujanook is a class above most. Definitely not typical of some of the kitchens. Like some, we've had little tiny wood stoves and that's all you've got. We had a gas stove that got fly blown. You could smell from the front door. Uh, we had to throw that out and just use a little wood stove in the middle of summer. Um, yeah, no, this is pretty good, actually, very good. It's like being at home. Good facilities attract good people. And at the end of the day, we're all here to do a good job. That's basically the genuine wish of everyone. And these isolated areas where People have to stay overnight or for several days or two weeks. I think it's an important part of our, of our society out here to be able to get the work done properly. Sometimes, when they're too far from town, it's a case of make do. There is a bit of an art to it. You'll always run out of something, always. So you work around that. A good cook should be able to make anything out of nothing, and it's very much appreciated and enjoyed. Some people are enthusiastic about their work, and some people are less enthusiastic. Well, we've had um, a few cooks, and they can make everything from scratch, whereas other people, the whole stores is full of packets, 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 yeah. What's for tea? I don't know. Cheryl hadn't told me. Yeah. There's one ingredient never in short supply. Dick's always got plenty of yarns. <laughs> There's no worries about that. There's one thing he's never short on. Once, shearing was a staunchly blokey affair. Some couldn't tolerate a woman near the wool shed. It reminds me we were up in Queensland one year and, and uh, the cook snatched it and went. And next thing, the cocky's wife said, oh, I'll fill in until we get somebody. And the presser turned, a new presser turned up, got out of the taxi, 60 mile out, seen the woman in the shed and said, woman cook, take me back to town. So that what women were about once, but now they're probably 50% of the time, yeah. Even Sharon. It was once customary for the cook to kill a sheep for rations. I can dress a sheep, but I couldn't cut their throat and they're soft <laughs> <laughs> when we're on a station and they kill meat for us, I mean, we'd go through a whole sheep in a matter of a couple of days. Oh, yeah. We have roast dinners, 
day and night, different things, chops and so on. I mean, there's so many different things you can do with lamb. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing. These days, there's less meat on the menu. I don't remember making so much salad years ago. It's more, it was more soup and meat and veg then. But now, I mean, in the hot weather, they like a lot of salad. And even in the winter, I've had people ask for salad, so... Everybody's become a bit more wary of what they're eating. There's always fruit. Everybody goes berserk for fruit and, and salads and, and wraps, and it's really quite amazing, yeah. How much and what shearing teams eat depends on the weather. This can be frightfully hot work. We get icy poles uh, in summer and we just hang for icy poles in the afternoon. Yeah, and watermelon and they keep it cold and it's just beautiful because as you can imagine, like on a 40 degree day outside and it's 40 degrees inside the shed, like you just, anything that's cool is delicious and beautiful, yeah. But it seems everyone who's ever worked in a shearing team has a horror story about a cook. They've tried to starve us and uh, yeah, some just had no idea. We did have, oh, years before, when we were up in Queensland and women weren't in the sheds then, we had this cook that, oh, they were changing sheds and they didn't want to cook dinner for them. And so Dick said to him, look, mate, I think you better cook dinner for these blokes. So he just picks up a dirty big bag of potatoes and tips it into a pot of cold water, dirt and all, and said, there, that'll do them. Dick Duggan once saw three cooks sacked in quick succession. Well, uh, somebody left a bottle of rum in the room and I didn't realise until three of them had to go. And then I got rid of the rum. I've seen one that told us he had alcoholic poison at Charleville. Yeah, I remember him well. We had to get rid of him. Yeah, we went all week and he, we still had three passes of sheep in the meat house. But that was on the Friday morning when we got rid of him. Well, think that's it, is it? Yeah. So does Cheryl Duggan feel appreciated? They do say thank you every, every, nearly every meal, so I'm hoping they are. I think we would, would we not have a job now if we were? <laughs> <laughs> they do it blindfold. They know what each other's thinking and, and they just put it all together. They're a great team to have with a shearer's team, yeah, because they're a team as well. When you get to my age, what do you do, you know? Sort of, you've got to be doing something, don't you? When you've worked all your life, you just don't stop. You get used to travelling around, and when you, once you're home after a little while, you get, Dick and I start getting a bit cranky. We don't, talk, we don't talk much at all, but then we don't talk at all. So, you know, it just, yeah, it's good to get away and talk, and talk to other people about different things. How long do you reckon you'll, you'll stick at this game? Till he, till, till he dies. He won't let me retire. <laughs> I don't know. I think we've got another year or two in us yet, maybe. Mm, I don't know. <laughs>